Okay, uh, we have a little skit for you, and you are getting to see the first rehearsal, the dress rehearsal, and the last rehearsal. So, uh, I, as the director, I may be giving some direction to some of the people that might not have had a chance to talk to me for me to tell them what to do. But we will see how it goes. So, first of all, I hope you've already heard about the Democrats a broad global presidential primary, also called the GPP. So, how many of you have voted in a prior global primary? Okay, all the rest of you are also gonna get the opportunity to vote in person. And I'm gonna give you a quick overview about the GPP. We've talked about some of this already, and then we'll do this little skit. First of all, the global presidential primary is the first step in the delegate selection plan. DA is an official state party of the Democratic National Committee, and we get to send delegates to the Democratic National Convention, and they help determine who our presidential candidate, our nominee, will be. We have eight automatic, automatic delegates, that's our <coughs> international chair, our vice chair, along with six DNC members. In addition, DA elects 13 delegates that get to go to the convention to vote. The results of the global primary determine how many delegates there are for each candidate. A candidate must receive at least 15% of the vote to be, the global vote, to be allocated a delegate. For example, in 2016, Sanders had 69% of the vote, and Clinton had 31% of the vote, so we had nine delegates for Bernie, and we had four delegates for Hillary. Any member in DA can run to be a delegate. That means anyone in this room could run. Well, except the Germans. But. <laughs> okay, uh, and the details are all on the, on the DA website. They're already there. If you go to democratsbroad.org, it's on the home page, and you can find out all the information. There's going to be more information coming out. Okay, then we have electors at our global convention. That will be held in Toronto. And the number of votes each country committee receives for their electors, like Germany, is based on the percent of voters from their country that vote in GPP. So, the more of our Germany members that vote, the more uh, votes that we will have as electors at the convention, which means that we will likely vote for someone we like from Germany to be one of those delegates. And I had that lucky opportunity in 2008, so thank you for those that voted in 2008. Anyway, there's lots of details. Uh, they're in the delegate selection plan. I don't think you want me to want to hear me tell you about them all, but I will tell you some of the few uh, important things. First, it's the U.S. Democratic presidential primary. You can only vote in one. You cannot vote in more than one for the presidential candidate. So if you vote in your state primary, you cannot vote in the GPP. If you vote in the GPP, you cannot vote for the presidential candidate in your state primary. You can vote for any other offices, just not president. Only one for that. And uh, you must be a member of DA to be able to vote in the GPP. You can vote in person or remotely. To vote in person, you need to go to the voting center in your country. The voting centers are open in multiple cities, as we heard earlier. There's going to be 30 of them across Germany. And those will be from March 3rd until March 10th. And uh, you'll be getting more information about that with all the details. It's also already on our website. To vote remotely, you can request a ballot and return it either by post, by email, or by fax. And it must be received by March 10th, the end of the primary. And all ballots must be, have your name and contact information on them and signed and dated. Otherwise, they won't be counted. And also, no ID is required when you sign in, but you are going to be required to sign a legal declaration, and this is an official U.S. election, so it is a legal document that all the information you're entering is correct. 
and anyone in the room or anyone can challenge that the vote is legitimate that if someone says I know that person they don't really live in Germany or they're not really an American can challenge and then an investigation will take place so we are now going to look at what happens in the global primary there's lots of different players and our first scene is to see what happens when someone tries to campaign within 10 meters of the voting <laughs> So, hello, welcome to the global presidential primary. Um, you'll need to go to check-in, and then you'll sign in, and you'll get your ballot. Thank you very much. I bought this really wonderful sweatshirt out of the uh, thing, but it's really hot, so I was just wondering if I could hang it up anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you're not allowed to have any campaign material uh, visible while you're in the polling location. So we'll need to have you keep your jacket on. But I'm still taking it off. Okay, so I was just wondering, because I have, I like, I'm really neutral. I have everybody. Uh, I'm very, very sorry. Your glasses are great. That is wonderful for the Democratic Party. However, we would really ask that you keep your jacket on. It's really hot in here, but I, I really want to vote in the primary, so I'll do it. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much for yeah. some customer service for him to let me It's been you. Thank you. Okay. In this scene, we'll look at how to deal with a journalist. I'm here for. Uh, Wolf Blitzer sent me here. <laughs> and I'm with. I'm with CNN, and I can't understand why you'd have a pr primary overseas. They're only in the States, I thought. What's this all about? Well, thank you for coming. We really appreciate that you're here at our uh, unit voting center. Um, because you're from the press, we would like to ask that you wear uh, credentials so that our members and other voters here know that you are uh, from the press. Um, if you're also with him, we would ask you to wear one as well. Um, and I would like to introduce you to our communications uh, coordinator. This is um, Connie Communications. Communications. <laughs> she will be happy to talk to you. Well, I don't understand why you care about this. You don't live there. Aren't you glad to be away from Trump? Why would you want to have a, uh, have a primary? First of all, oh. <laughs> oh, you, you must have gotten my press release that I sent out last week. Thank you. For yes. Yes. So what was your question? Well, what do you think of Angela Merkel anyway? Huh? Do you think she, do you think she'll... Wait, wait, you had a first question. What oh, well, I asked it, I asked it her. Why do you care about the U.S. president? Oh, that wasn't your first question. <laughs> how did you... I thought he asked the first... Anyway, first of all, how, why are you having a presidential primary at all? I'm glad you asked Outside the U.S. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Journalist. I'm glad you asked that question. I bet a lot of your viewers aren't even aware that we are the official party of the Democratic Party. And we hold a primary outside of the United States to, elect, to help the process to send our candidates to the, to the, uh, our delegates to the convention. But aren't you glad to be out of the U.S.? Why would you care about this? Well, first of all, we're all American citizens, and of course we care about what's going on in the United States. Just because we do not live in the United States, we still give up our voting rights. And especially Americans living outside of the United States are very much aware of the impact that American politics has on world politics. And we need a reliable, a good government to have the influence on the world. Well, Jake Tepper asked me to ask you, what do you think of <laughs> Angela Merkel anyway, huh? Actually, from Democrats abroad, I'd be glad to answer any of your questions regarding your GDP. Just off the record, just tell me. <laughs> about how this process works, and I can give you information about our next candidate um, um, presentation we're going to be mm -hmm. giving us next week. Who do you think is going to win this primary? The voters decide. <laughs> we actually have, uh, the process is from the, our elections now, our, our primaries, from the 3rd until June, and shortly after that we'll get the results for you. The official results by March 23rd. Oh, March 23rd. <laughs> our results from you. Our results from everyone's abroad will be March 23rd. Can we take a picture? Do you have my oh, photography here? Stand by the ballot box. Right? <laughs> 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 You're supposed to stand by the ballot box. Okay, I'll be back later to annoy you about something. In scene three, we'll 
see what happens when a new member wants to join. Hi, I'm the registration guest. Hello, um, my name is Nancy Newby, and this is the first time I've actually been able to vote overseas, so I would like to be able to vote today. Okay, let me look. I'm sorry, but um, I don't show your name on our membership list. In order to participate in the primary, you must be a member of Democrats Abroad. If you'd like to join now, you can, and then you can vote. You just need to confirm that you are a U.S. citizen living in Germany and will be 18 on the day of the general election, which is November 3rd this year. Oh, trust me, I'm way over 18. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. And, as, and with respect to being a Democrat, not a problem. I left the United States to get rid of, to get away from Trump and his, his trottle and his, his Trump pansies and his fascist ideas. So I, I completely 100% support okay. Democrat. Good. Do you have a smartphone? I do, right here. Okay, so if you just go to www.democratsabroad.org slash join and fill out the info, once you do, come back and give it to me and with your new membership number. Okay. And there'll be a computer for people that don't have a smartphone with them so that they can join there. And if there are internet problems, we will have a paper backup. And what was that website again? www.democratsabroad.org slash join. Okay. Oh, Wait, there's a little bit more. Ah, oh, what's your number? My number is 654-321. <laughs> okay, great. And your name was Nancy Newby? That's correct. Okay. Then I just need to log you on here as a new member. And here's your ballot. And you're set. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, we're in scene four. In this scene, we'll look at what happens when a person shows up that doesn't live in Germany. Well, uh... Hi, Donna. I just happened to be in Munich today, and so I was wondering where I could vote. Uh, hopefully, as the EMEA Regional Vice Chair, uh, you know that um, you can only vote in a voting center in your country of residence. You'll have, will you be back in Luxembourg in time? Um, I will, but I mean, you know I'm a DA member. <laughs> it's a lot easier for me to just take care of this now. So, what do you say? Uh, well, <laughs> what we are encouraging um, any out-of-country members to vote remotely. So if you're going to stay in Germany, then vote remotely for Luxembourg. If you live in another part of Germany, you can still vote in our uh, voting center. But since you are in, live in another country, sorry, you can't get me to do that. Um, remote votes can be done via email or, um, yeah, Via, uh, be done via an email attachment, fax, or postal mail. But it must be received by March 10th, midnight, Vancouver time. Okay. I did know that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was just testing you. <laughs> 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 be sure we know the rules. We've got Sherry. <laughs> well. So, but, but you can go to the party oh, in the great. next room. And have a good That's dance, right. and I'll see you later. Okay, yeah. I hope there's some dance music. Yeah, well, we didn't bring some. In scene five, we're going to see what happens when someone shows up thinking it's also for the Republican primary. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Hi, what's your name? Uh, first name is Rob, and last name Republican. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't show your name on our list. You must be a member of Democrats Abroad if you want to vote in our primary. Really? Um, yes, you can join today if you'd like to and vote. Do I need to provide a witness to join? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard on Fox News that the Democrats Fox always News? Want witnesses. <laughs> They're always asking about witnesses, and I just, just heard something I heard on the news, and I just really don't like this whole witness idea. It's an invasion of privacy, but you know. Let me get back to the script. <laughs> But yeah, okay, so I don't want to join Democrats abroad. I am a Republican, and I'm here for one reason, and that's to vote for Donald Trump. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is a primary for Democrats, not Republicans. What? You must be kidding. I drove 60 kilometers to vote. I drove, I didn't take the train. <laughs> Excellent. Very admirable. 
and um, yeah, I saw the, on the internet that U.S. citizens could vote in the presidential primary today, and I am a U.S. citizen. But you went to vote for a Democrat, for the Republicans. Um, yes. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that you didn't notice that this primary is for Democratic presidential candidates. We only have Democrats on our ballot today, and only Democrat, members of Democrats abroad may vote. Well, I'm never voting for a Democrat. That's just ludicrous, and <clears throat> the Democrats are just so well organized. <laughs> In this scene, we're going to see what happens when someone shows up that's not a U.S. citizen. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Fred. Hi, Donna. Good to see you again. It's good to see you. I would like a ballot, please. <laughs> Manfred, you must be a member of Democrats Abroad to vote in this primary. Are you a dual citizen? Have you become an American? Uh, no. Hey, I'm a Bavarian. That's a... <laughs> I was a little bit touched by Texan. <laughs> From the days of deportation there. I mean, why can't I have a lot about it? I know so much about US politics, <laughs> both from CNN and Fox News. <laughs> I just, thought, I just thought I'd help throw out Trump. I mean, he's a disaster for the world. Well, you're a very informed person, Manfred, but uh, I'm sorry, but this is an official election, and only Americans and members of Democrats abroad can participate in it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm Sherry's husband. I mean, I, I, I help her. I help her in her hard work. I even brought the ballot box to <laughs> More, even more Americans than Sherry. And so if you go and tell all your American friends that they should be voting in our Democrats abroad prime, become members of Democrats abroad and go in our prime. <laughs> equal rights for all. <laughs> well, that's why, Manfred, I look forward to partying with you in the next room. Oh, okay. All right. The election is over. <laughs> so I go. Uh, Activate my other American friends. Most of them said, Tia, but I knew a few more to come vote. That sounds yeah. good. <laughs> this scene, we'll see what happens when a 17 year old shows up to vote. Hi, what's your name? My name is Susan 17. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but I don't show you on our membership list. Uh, in order to vote in the primary, you must be a member of Democrats Abroad. Um, if you'd like to join today, you can, and you, then you could vote. You just need to be a U.S. citizen living abroad, uh, who will be 18 by November 3rd, the date of the general election this year. Hmm, I thought it was November 6th. That's what they told me last year, or in the midterms in 2018. I'll be 18 on November 4th. Unfortunately, to vote, you must be 18 by the general election day, and this year it is on November 3rd. Oh, so. hmm, but can't you make an exception? Maybe with the time zones, it could be considered. <laughs> I know I was born just after midnight. This would be my first time to vote, and it's really important to me. I wish I could make an exception, really. Um, so please just join Democrats Abroad as soon as you turn 18, and then we can keep you informed about all the upcoming elections. And do ask any of your American friends who will be 18 by November 3rd to join and vote today. Okay, thank you. Okay, and this thing we'll look at what happens when someone shows up that already voted in another U.S. primary. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Hello. Thank you very much. Hi, I have a question. Uh, this declaration here says that um, I did not or will not participate in any other presidential elections. So I vote in Iowa, and I happen to be there for the caucuses, and I already voted in the caucus. Does that mean I can't participate today? Yes, that's correct. You can only vote once for a presidential candidate during the primaries. Mm, okay, but here's the thing. The person I voted for lost. <laughs> really badly. So now that they're not a candidate anymore, can I just vote for my second choice? Unfortunately, that would be breaking the rules. You can only vote once for a presidential primary candidate. I'm sorry, but rules are rules. That's 
disappointing. But I understand. Thank you anyway. You're still welcome to join the party next door. <laughs> is there party music? There is. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, and this scene, we're now in scene nine of ten, and we'll look at what happens when someone does not sign their ballot. Would you like me to repeat the Review your ballot for you. Why would I want you to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people make mistakes and we're offering to review it to make sure it's counted and not spoiled. For example, some people forget to sign it. Oh, oh I hadn't even noticed that I was supposed to sign it. Well, what is my name even on here? Shouldn't it just be anonymous? Well, that's one of the requirements from the Democratic National Committee. Not that no voting is completely anonymous. However, within DA, only a handful of people will know how you voted. Be assured that we will not be publishing anything oh. on how you voted. Okay, all right. I'm okay with that. I'm okay if you see my ballot, too. I can understand that some people might not want to show it, so I'm glad that it's an option. Well, would you please check <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are you sure you want to vote for it? Uh, looks good to me. Thanks for writing so legibly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for making sure that I filled it out correctly. Can we get a photo? Can we get a photo? <laughs> okay, okay, sure. Hold up your belt so we can see who you voted for. <laughs> no, no, I'm no, not. She said no. What's the matter? Are you embarrassed about who you voted for or something? Or what is it? Show, hold it up. The whole world wants to know. She said no. Oh. So, well, no means no. Just pose dropping the ballot in. We're going to look at what happens during the tallying of the ballot. Can we start counting yet? We already have quite a few. We can get a head start. No, we can't open the ballot box until the voting has closed and everyone has voted who's in line. Okay. It's now 8 p.m. and time to close the voting. We'll let anyone already in line complete the process. Please make sure if you have voted that you have put your ballot in the ballot box. Please move on to the party room if you are through voting. Last call for ballots. <laughs> Would you please bring us the ballots? So uh, I'm here as an official observer for my candidate, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and I want to make sure, and I want to look at every single ballot as you count it. Well, welcome. Sure, you can watch the process, and you're welcome to examine any ballot you wish. Thanks. So before we start counting, we need to secure all the ballots that weren't voted. So tellers or other volunteers will come over to this table and collect all the unused ballots and put them someplace safe, either in a box or an envelope or something, but we're going to put them right here so they don't get mixed up and they don't get into the box. And then the next thing is um, check-in person, Donna whatever. <laughs> um, could you please tell us how many people have voted? Could you count on the check-in list and tell us how many ballots you have distributed? Yeah, I've been keeping track. Mm, 150. 150. Thank you. Okay, the tellers pack up the unused ballots and set them aside, they look at the check-in list and count the number of ballots distributed, and they note the number. Okay, at this point we know there's 150, so let's open the box and see how many are in there. <coughs> it just opens on the other side. Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. We'll be sorting the ballots by candidate. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and they start going through the ballots and sorting them by candidate. Hey, what do we do with this 
first one. They didn't check any candidate name, even though they filled everything else out on the ballot. Well, that's a spoiled ballot then if they didn't vote. So we'll have to write spoiled on this ballot. Hmm. There's no signature on this one. Should I go try to find the person? Maybe they're still here. No, the voting has closed, so unfortunately, if somebody hasn't signed their ballot, it's spoiled as well. So we'll write on that ballot, and we'll add it to the stack of spoiled ballots. Hey, I think, uh, I think this ballot is wrong. I talked to this person, and she told me that she wanted to vote for Mickey. I think she checked me by mistake. Um, she's probably just off notes kind of hard to keep track of it. Can we change that? <laughs> no, we can't because it looks like a valid ballot. Everything else is fine. The person, you know, marked what they marked and signed it. So no, that will go into the Mickey stack. Hey guys, how's it going? Who's winning? Um, we don't know who's winning yet because we're counting. So it would really be helpful for us if you would um, keep people away from the table so that we don't get distracted and can keep counting and sorting. Anybody can observe, but they should, you know, stay at a reasonable distance and we'll be finished just as soon as we can be finished. Okay, I got the hint. <laughs> what do we do with this ballot? He wrote in a name on the ballot. Well, we need to mark that as spoiled. Here's the pen, because uh, our balloting system doesn't allow for writing candidates. You had to go through some steps to get your name on the ballot. And so you can vote only for the names that are there. If you don't want to vote for any of those people, there is an uncommitted choice here, and that person could have voted for uncommitted. But writing someone in means another spoiled ballot. Yeah, there's more. Oh. Oh, of course, there's little chance that uncommitted is going to get the 15% that they need to get a delegate. What do you mean by 15%? Um, in the global presidential primary, only candidates that have achieved 15% of votes from around the world will be allocated any delegate. Anybody with less than 15% will not get a delegate on our delegation to the convention. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. And Hard to remember everything in the 210 pages of the DSP. <laughs> For details, you need to read every word, Nancy. <laughs> Tom, Tom, you tell her. <laughs> Can we post the results after we finish counting? Yes, according to the election rules, we can and we should post the results in order to be transparent. But we must also say that this, these results are preliminary until the ballots have been rechecked later, and it's only for this voting center and on this day, and doesn't have really meaning for the voting centers in our country and other days or for the world. Okay, now the tellers complete the count of the ballots. Follow all the steps required for the tabulation of ballot handling, and make sure all ballots are accounted for, that the number of ballots distributed matches the number of ballots voted and are spoiled and packed up, clearly label the ballot packages, they post the preliminary results, they fill out the official GPP tally sheet and sign it, they are the voting center manager calls in the results to the designated DA regional person and sends in their tally sheet by email and then they join the party. <laughs> I was dismayed to learn after we finished our skit that scene one actually had a mistake in it. The correct answer is that the campaigning that you cannot do within 10 meters of the voting center is that you cannot verbally campaign for anyone or hold signs. Wearing t-shirts or buttons is okay. So two things to learn. No campaigning includes that you can 
wear t-shirts and buttons, but not verbally campaign within the 10 meter parameter. And secondly, don't assume that any of the rules are the same as they were in 2016. Make sure that you read the latest rules. Thanks.